evolving thing. Last year I brought chocolate back, I think, right? We all had a little taste of it, and it was rough looking, chopped in squares, and now as you see here, it's in beautiful molds. We even make chocolate bars. And as Joshua, the student, said, oh yeah, this is how we started out. Um, as Joshua, the student, said in the pictures there, if you show the next pictures, we now have something that's looking a little bit more professional, and we take it um, to the capital city, and we've been able to um, employ these students that you see here, Sunday, Gifty, Joshua, Kona, Videla. Um, they all have jobs now that they can pay their school fees, which is a big deal. Um, I just was talking to the president of the, the college, and he said that 40 out of the 160 students last year paid their school fees. So, um, that's a problem uh, because that causes a lot of financial stress uh, for the school. We've had a hard time paying our teachers this past year. And so the more jobs that we can pay, uh, get in Liberia, like Joshua was saying, the more we can help ourselves to pay those fees and to do whatever it is that we want to do, take care of our families, whatever it is. And so this chocolate business was um, not something I ever saw myself doing when I went to Liberia. Um, and a lot of people talk to me and they come up to me and, oh, the chocolate business, the chocolate business, tell me more. And the truth is the chocolate business terrifies me <laughs> a lot. Um, just so that you guys know, I, you know, I'm a teacher and that's where my, I feel comfortable, that's where I have a degree and so I can feel that safe in that area. And there's been a, a few things in my life where I've said, God, I will do anything, I'll go anywhere, I will do that, but I will not do this. And guess what that one thing was, business. I will not do business, God. I don't want to be involved in business. I've seen so much shady things in business. There's so many risks that you take in business. I'm a very risk-averse person when it comes to those things. And so I told God, anything, 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 not the business, God. Not that. <laughs> Has anyone done that with God before? <laughs> How's it worked out for you? <laughs> yeah, about the same. Yeah, so, you know, I married a teacher. This was going to be our life. Teachers, you know, just having a cool, regular... <laughs> calm life and and then this this teacher of mine uh wanted to do his mba and wanted to be involved in business and he started talking about business things and i wanted to use business to serve the kingdom of god and i said that's great <laughs> put that over here um and so this has just been an area where god has been teaching me a lot about what it means um to rely on him and follow his plans um and many, many times I've wanted to kind of stop with this chocolate business. Joshua and I work very closely together. He's the one in the green. And there's been times where I've just said, Joshua, I'm not doing it anymore. I can't do it. It's too stressful. We don't have any cocoa beans. We, our, cocoa, our chocolate isn't selling. There's been probably three times where we literally ran out of cocoa beans. And I was like, okay, fine. I'm, it's, the time has come. God is saying it's time to give up. It's fine. But then you know what? Someone calls me literally that day where I'm like, nope, we're done, we're gonna take a break. <laughs> Someone calls me with cocoa beans. Uh -huh. And over and over and over again, every time that I get discouraged, um, God puts somebody else in my life to remind me that this is kind of what he wants us to work on right now. Um, you'll see pictures in the next slide. Um, he's brought a lot of people into my life that have reminded me that this is, this big idea of a chocolate business, being able to provide jobs, being able to provide, provide assistance for farmers, being able to help pay our teachers. This is a big goal and a big dream, and he's reminded me time and time again that he is the one who's in control of that and how this is going to work out. The same way in agriculture, we have to have faith that the seeds we plant are going to grow. It's the same way with this chocolate business. So over and over, I personally have been reminded um, that it is not me and my skills that are going to change anything in Liberia. Um, it is going to be God and what he wants Amen. to do in that area. <laughs> yeah, and so it's been a um, challenging experience as I've fought with God a lot on this one, but it's been very rewarding um, because he's shown me what it is to be dependent on him and his plans and what it looks like to follow those and also dependent on people. These are two of my um, students who I did not know until last year grew cocoa. Um, Titus over here, he grows, he's growing cocoa seedlings. I think he has like 60,000 seedlings he planted wow. and nursed in his nursery there. And you can see his face. I mean, look at his face. He's so proud and excited um, to show this to me. But he told me, he said, Mrs. Glenn, I'm growing cocoa 
I'm employing two people just in my nursery right now. On my farm, I'm employing people. I have paid all of my school fees this year because I am growing this. Um, and then uh, my other student, Othello over here, I just met him and it turns out that his family has one of the biggest cocoa farms in all of the county where we live. <laughs> um, yeah, thanks God. Um, but I have learned so much from him and both of these students have been an encouragement to me. Um, and I've realized that I may not have all the knowledge and wisdom, but collectively, um, the people that God is placing in our school and in our community, we can help this grow. And I'm just going to look at it baby steps here as we continue to grow. Um, this is a picture of a farmer who's tasting his cocoa as chocolate for the very first time ever um, because there has not been any processing of cocoa beans in the country. As you might have heard Joshua say in the video there, they take the cocoa beans and then they export them. And so the percent that stays in Liberia, if you look at a chocolate bar, if it costs $1, three cents of that stays in Liberia um, when it's being exported. Because all the processing jobs, all the packaging jobs, all the marketing, selling job, jobs, those are all in Europe or the US or wherever. So the more jobs and the more income and money that can stay in Liberia, the better it's going to be for the country as they continue to grow. So our goals and visions for this are just to influence students, help them to get jobs, teach them real life skills, job skills, like he said, management skills, people skills, uh, marketing skills. Um, we want to help the farmers get fair prices for their cocoa. I'm sure you guys have probably heard about this fair trade cocoa. There's a lot of issues in the cocoa industry with farmers not getting paid um, what they deserve, especially in Liberia. The, the buyers that come in will come in during hunger season where people do not have enough food and they are willing to give whatever, <coughs> whatever price, just to get a small bag of rice. And so there's a lot of explo exploitation in the cocoa buying industry. And so we just <coughs> want to change that. We want to have the economic system thriving there. And we want to help people to see what it is to practice Christian principles in the area of business. And so that's, those are our goals for that. Um, like I said, I just wanted to share some lessons learned over the past year for me. It's been a lot of um, learning that again and again, I am not in control <laughs> of anything, which is I think a lesson that God has to teach me many times. I try and um, take control of a lot of things, but this year God has really been showing me um, how much I need him <laughs> and how much I need to rely on him and not on my own understanding, on my own anxiety, on my own fears, on my own skill sets or degrees. How much I need to be dependent on him and also the people around me. Um, I've learned a lot about what it is um, that his power can be made known in my weakness. So when I feel inadequate and scared, it's okay to say those things and recognize that and um, hopefully then God has more room to work in me and in the lives of people around me when I kind of shut <laughs> my own um, fears and anxieties and things down and give them to him. Um, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything with prayer and petition, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. And anybody who knows me probably knows I'm very type A. I tend to get really stressed out and anxious um, about a lot of things, and this chocolate thing has probably just escalated that. <laughs> but God has actually shown me a lot of times throughout this process. Again, he's given me peace and comfort in knowing that, yes, like Nathan said, this is where we are supposed to be, and he is going to do what he will um, with these people that I love and this community that I love. And um, it's just taught me a lot about surrender <laughs> this past year and, and just letting go of all my ideas, my controls, my plans, and um, giving those up to God and letting him use them to bless uh, others. Um, and so kind of in line with that, like I said, this past year has been a lot of learning about how I can't do this on my own. Um, I need God, and we also need the community around us. Um, and that's why we just want to talk about some of the ways that you can partner with us. Um, 
when I was in Pastor Terry's office earlier this week, she told me a little story about how she was talking to people and trying to explain to everybody how connected and dependent we are on each other. And I think you said you were at a women's group retreat and you asked how many of you, you know, relied on someone to get you here today. How many people did it take to get how you here? How many people today? did it take to get you here today? And they said, I drove myself here. You know, I, I'm good, right? And then she said, well, who made your car? Did you make your car? Uh, did you drink coffee this morning? Did you grow those cocoa beans? <laughs> or those coffee beans, I'm sorry. Um, who made the clothes that you're wearing? Who um, grew the cotton in that? You know, who, think of, uh, and it just started to get me thinking as well about the huge community and how all of these things are connected and we are dependent on each other. Um, this world, all of us are dependent and connected in each other. And that's why this partnership that we have with all of you guys is so important to us, especially those of, and you guys are all here tonight, which <laughs> means an incredible um, amount to us. And so some of the ways that we can continue to work together in that is through prayers. Um, we, we need your prayers and we love um, your prayers. And when you guys send us messages saying that you are praying for us, that is incredibly up uplifting and encouraging. Oftentimes, as much as we love our job there, we really miss our family and our community here. And so um, just getting those messages and um, knowing that you guys have been praying for us, and I know that Epworth has been praying for us, those really build us up, and those mean a lot to us. Um, as I said, another thing is um, you guys can visit. We would love to see some of you there um, using the skills that God has um, given you. And I think the most important thing when people come and visit is the relationships that we can build with one another. The verse that I chose there is, let us consider how we can spur one another on towards love and good deeds. And I found that in everybody who has come and visit, it's less about the work they did, but more about the relationships that were built there and being able to encourage our brothers and sisters in Christ. Um, and we know that not everybody's gonna come and we don't expect that, so there's a lot of things that you can do from this side too. The praying is a huge one. Um, also coordinating and sending supplies. Um, we've mostly been relying on our families to do a lot of um, sending supplies for the, the mission over there. And so if anybody has the gift of coordination and getting you know donations together and organizing those, maybe that's something that, that you can use to send things over um, for the farm. Being able to share this ministry with um, your friends and talk about that and um, just share the cool things that you um, are seeing through this, that's also a way that you can be involved. Um, we are dependent and relying on our community, and so the more people that know about what's going on in Liberia, the more people that can be praying for that ministry, and the more people that can be involved in that. And then lastly, um, you can be involved through financial support as well. And this is not something that missionaries love to do, to ask for money in this culture. We're very used to growing up and being independent. But again, God has shown me the beauty in being dependent on him for all of my resources and my provision and also on my church and my family. Um, and that's not always an easy place to be, but it is a place, it's something that God, God has been using again and again to remind me who he is, he's in control, and he is my provider and all of our providers and will provide us everything we need. So I chose the verse um, there, consider the ravens, uh, they do not sow or reap. They have no storeroom or barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable are all of us to the birds? And so I know sometimes in Liberia it's really difficult to look out and see all the struggles um, that we see every day. But I also know that God is providing in ways that I do not see yet and in ways that are going to impact my community and friends that I have there for many, many years to come. Um, and so we thank everybody who's been a financial partner with us, and we also invite um, anybody else to join us in that. If you go to the um, next slide, you can see here, um, this is kind of where we're at right now before we return back to Liberia. We're a little bit less than 50% funded to be able to go back. Um, so we do have um, opportunities for giving online through checks, um, we have people who sign up to be monthly donors, and we have people who are um, 
one-time donors as well. And so the, some of those expenses that we have are plane tickets, medical insurance, um, our living expenses, all of those things over there. Um, saving up for retirement because this is, this is our full-time jobs now. Um, and so that's gonna be important for us later. And so there's, um, there's a lot of cards on the back table there that have links for um, how you can give and join us in this um, area. And we'd be incredibly thankful and grateful um, for you guys to be a part of this with us. And I tell people this all the time, and I have to catch myself sometimes too, but this ministry is not Nathan and Anna's ministry. Um, I often say our ministry, our ministry, because I'm there, but um, we could not do our part if it were not for all of you guys doing um, your part here. And so I really appreciate everyone who has been giving to us over these past few years. That's meant an incredible amount to us, and it's been um, necessary to keep us there. And so I just want to thank you guys for being involved and invite you guys to continue to be involved um, through this way. So we just wanted to say thank you. Um, just show some goofy pictures there of our our life um, there. You know, we do have a little bit. Oh, yeah, there's me, Anna. I forgot I put it there. Yeah, um, we do have um, friends there. We have another family that we work with and we get to spend time with. Um, Nathan has a dog, which I'm pretty sure he loves more than me sometimes. It's not, it's not my dog, but it might as well be. Yeah. Um, that's Nimba. She's named after the county that we, we live in, Nimba County. Um, you know, we've gotten to go out. This is us going out on our little anniversary. I think that was yeah. our fourth year anniversary. Yeah. We went to a little restaurant nearby. Stanley um, is one of our friends and cooked us up a little... Uh, something and even put some flowers on the table for us. So, uh, Here we have uh, missionary friends in, in Bonga, a city over, that have a uh, big Thanksgiving um, dinner every year and also New Year's sometimes. And uh, so this is one of those dinners. They have a fire and everybody sits around. And uh, I think this was. New Year's slash Christmas, because I remember singing Christmas carols here. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, weird, in the heat of Liberia, <laughs> singing Palm Christmas trees, carols. Bon -bon, eating Christmas cookies, yeah. This is uh, a chance that we had to get away and uh, um, get to a, uh, a beach that a lot of people like to go to called Robertsport, and um, there's a, it's known that there's a ship down the, down the beach uh, after a hike that is... Uh, come up ashore and it's just fun to go and see and, the, and um, the, the process of getting there is a lot of fun. The hike is a lot of fun as and well. And there's a little baby deer that showed up on our doorstep one day. We, re we really don't know what's going to show up on our doorstep <laughs> some days, um, but some little boys brought that by <coughs> and they were hoping to sell it to us, but um, we just looked at it, took a few pictures, <laughs> gave it back. Um, but yeah, so those, those are just some things here. We just wanted you guys to just be able to share in our regular everyday life there as well. Um, and just say thank you again and again and again, because we cannot say thank you enough for the sacrifices that you guys have made, the time that you have spent reading our newsletters, messaging us and telling us that you've read them the time you spent praying for us, the financial sacrifices all of you guys have made, we really do believe that um, this is part of the community that we're a part of, and we are happy to invite you guys into that community as well, this life that we live in Liberia. Um, like Pastor Terry was talking about, this, these are our neighbors, um, and these are also, we are all connected, more than I realize, every single day I realize over and over again how all of us are connected, and so, we just thank you guys for coming out tonight um, and hearing us and showing all these pictures. And we wanted to open it up for a little bit of Q&A time. And then um, we'll wrap it up with some prayers at the end, some specific things that we can pray for tonight. So does anybody have questions?